one of these ballots. Uh, some of you may go, oh no, um, I don't have a pen or a pencil. Look, if you want to, if you want to vote yes, then tear the dough off and throw it away. <laughs> you know, I mean, we can take a hit, and so that would be an easier way to do that. Okay, so here's the budget. We have had the budget in 2017 of $646,000. $696. The budget for 2018, not 2108, 2018, is $643,176. If you'll notice in the difference, that is a decrease of the budget by $3,520. Now, some people may be running through here real quick and they're looking for security in there. And security is not going to be in this budget this year. There's going to be a, a line item for it. But there is $5,000 that has been set aside by the church in conference this last uh, conference, this past two Sunday nights ago. No, last Sunday. Uh, for that purpose. So. $5,000 has been set aside for the purpose of security, but it doesn't affect this at this time. Yeah, everybody up here has got one? Okay, now, we still got folks that are looking for them? Okay, there are some on the seat right there. Okay, so if you are supportive of the budget uh, at a $3,520 decrease to 643,176. You can circle yes, hold it up, pass it out to the agent. I sure she should not have left. That. <laughs> pass it out to the agent, <coughs> and um, yeah, they've got it. But but you can grab the ones that are in the offer plate right there because those these a lot of these folks are already but. Okay, do we have any other balance up here? Okay. And Henry. We'll give Sir some more. Sir. Alright. And uh, if y'all will take those right back there where Carol Teal is, they're gonna uh, take all those ballots and go through it and we shall know that we have approved our budget by the end of the service today. Over here. Okay. Over here. Everybody got the chance to vote. Okay, that will bring us officially to the end of this time of business. We have a motion to close. I'll make a motion. All right. And the second I saw, so Daniel and Jeremy, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Okay. This time, let's worship. All right, can you please stand with us as we continue our worship this morning? We're going to sing several Christmas carols, starting with Angels We Have Heard on High.
15 says, He appeared in flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by angels, was preached among the nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. Sing with us as we sing, Child in the Manger.
let's talk about Christmas as it should be. Christmas as it should be is a, an experience that goes on all the time. I don't know if any of y'all remember uh, the very first time that the media took on the idea of being on a mission for God. And it became a major joke. How many of you remember the Blues Brothers? Yeah, they were on a mission from God. And of course, it was a ridicule uh, of sorts that they were doing. Uh, and so a lot of people, uh, when they talk about being on a mission for God, it's a big joke. Thing. But it, it's become a catchphrase, you know, that guy is on a mission for God, to say he's insane or he's some kind of crazy, radical person. Now the fact of the matter is, there's a meaning to being on a mission for God. Has God called you for any purpose? child of his? The answer would be yes. The answer would be yes. And so whatever it is that God has set before you as the spiritual giftedness that you have, maybe you have the gift of teaching or encouragement, maybe you have the gift of helps, whatever it might be, that giftedness sets you on a mission to serve God in a particular way. There are specific people in the Old Testament who receive uh, direction from God, whether it was like Gideon, who, you know, God sends his messenger, he says to Gideon, oh, great man of valor, uh, you know, you're going to do this thing. Well, where was Gideon? He was hiding when the angels showed up. He was trying to winnow out some, some wheat and everything. He was hiding in a great fat. And, and he was like, you talking to me? You know? Uh, it's interesting how often that we as people really don't think that God has any special call or purpose on our life. And the New Testament characters, they saw it as well. It doesn't matter where you look in Scripture, you're finding people have been set apart on a mission from God. So, if that's true of them, is it not true of us? Uh, we're called to join God in what He's doing. The reality is, is that experience of God told us that every born again child of God has a purpose. And God is doing things all around us all the time. I mean, if you were just listening to the phone calls between, between Becky in the office and Jennifer in Mississippi, and then here's John, and he's talking to me. And so we would talk, and then the ladies would straighten it out. And we would talk, and the ladies would straighten it out. God's at work all around. And you know, we thank Him for it. But, you know, God is doing this because he wants to have a love relationship with us. He doesn't want us to just think about a God that's distant out there somewhere, but a God that is ever-present and real with us each and every day. So will we join God in what he's doing? We see in Scripture where God used, obviously, his spirit to draw people to a purpose. In the church... The Spirit gives us our spiritual gift. Amen? Isn't that right? Right. And so, through prayer, sometimes God speaks to us in things that are in keeping with His Word. Our circumstances sometimes point us to things in His Word. The church often is calling people for a purpose today. I had a testimony uh, that uh, one of the ladies on the nominating committee said, You know, I just couldn't think of anybody that would be right for this committee talked about it, came up with a name, and I walked over there and I asked this person, and they said, that's exactly what I want to do. I've had ideas. He's looking at it right now. And so, you've been, you've been testified about this. And so, and we have these kinds of things going on where God is revealing himself, his purposes, and his ways. And for this group that's here from Colonial Hills, you're going to have the opportunity to see God do so. Pretty incredible thing. The question is, is can you join me? And the answer is yes, you can. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what day each thing is going to happen. We're going to have a big meeting this evening. Probably get their ducks all in a row, and I will let you know. But what time are y'all generally going to eat breakfast? Yeah. And so if you want to help them, uh, whatever kind of work they're doing, sometimes they may, we've had some people ask us, can you do trim work? But if you have that skill, you might be able to help them get through. And 
there are a lot of things that are out there to be done. You know the community, you know what they do, and so uh, you can join them in that as well. Well, if you know that God has this invitation to call us, there's going to be a Christ often. We will say, God, 